Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Inquisitive Brain Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. This is a show that brings you interviews and insights from all walks of life on the reality of being. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. Today on the show is Bernadette Thompson. She's a genealogist who focuses on ancestral healing, and she helps those going through the grieving process to understand the mind, the body, and the spirit of connection in grief. She's been a genealogist for over 15 years, and she has an understanding of patterns of behavior in families. She helps them to discover secrets unshared, stories that may help them to understand their life and their experience of life right now. Of course, connecting to your ancestral history can be really life-changing. There are many things that none of us know about our ancestors simply because we weren't there. And so one of the things that Bernadette can do, she has a gift of helping people. Now, she does it practically by using uh, ancestral software, connecting with companies, uh, different companies that where you can provide DNA and learn about your ancestry. She also does it spiritually. So she's very connected to the spiritual side of things, in particular healing. She's the owner of Tell Me Our Story, Genealogy and Ancestral Healing. She's a genealogist who trained in grief and trauma, and she focuses on ancestral healing overall. She's certified through the University of Vermont Professional End of Life Doula Program. The End of Life Doula is fascinating, and wait till you hear about it, how she does it, what happens there. So I really wanted to speak to her about what that entails. It was really through her own trauma and grief of losing her husband to alcoholism that she began to feel the deep connection that she had with her ancestors. And she looked back at their stories. She began to feel a a very personal connection with them. And she began to understand their traumas, their triumphs, their resilience in a very real way. And they physically made her aware that they were surrounding and guiding her to understand and uncover things about them. And that's where the healing began. And this is what she brings to those that she works with. Today, we talk about how that looks, what that looks like if you did go to her to learn to understand and heal your ancestry, the past, the trauma in the past. We talk about some cultures who are steeped in trauma that can go back centuries. And she talks to us about how we begin to heal that trauma through going through the journey of our ancestors. Now, some of us, of course, may never know what our ancestors went through. We can look at the data, you know, we can get on all these platforms. Um, There are many out there where you can submit your DNA you can get it all back and the percentages and where they were people were born. But sometimes that history isn't there. And so you may feel or you may be, you may have a recurring theme in your life. And you cannot, for the life of you, understand how and why that's prevalent. We talk about addiction being one of the cruelest traumas that people go through, both for the addict and for the family connected to them. Uh, And we talk about that due to Bernadette's own history uh, that she experienced through her husband with alcoholism. She's very generous with her information because it is healing and it does help other people. And she's using that to help people. And it's interesting too that she has mediumistic skills and gifts, but she doesn't call herself a medium. And um, she just knows that she can hear and see things. So she's clairvoyant, clairaudient. And she is able to relay that information to people uh, so that it can help with their healing. It's a fascinating interview. 
I hope that you do enjoy it. And as always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave us a review, leave us a comment on YouTube and a review on Apple or Spotify. On Apple, just write a couple of words if, if you can, but leave us a five-star review, of course, and we'll be very, very grateful, myself and my guests. I cannot do this without you. You mean the world. So if you're not involved, there is no podcast. And there is a need for the podcast. I do believe that I help to champion those who are working in an unconventional way, those who are working with the spiritual side of things to learn and understand things, to research interviews, to research things. I certainly have learned so much from the people that I've interviewed. So I hope that's what you gain from listening to these interviews as well. Um, I believe I'm a gentle interviewer because this isn't a about uh, conflict. It's not about challenging people. This is about learning. And we have to be open to learn. If we're on the defense, then there's no in for the learning. Bernadette's on all social media. You can go to her website and all the links are in the show notes. And her website, tellmeourstory.com. So go over there and visit her. She's very kindly offering a 30-minute session for free, and that's just to talk through things and just to see if it's something you do want to do. If you take up a session, though, she's offering 10% off, and it's the code is Inquisitive Rin 10 I think ancestry is a fascinating topic. We all come from something and someone. We all have that energy. I believe we still carry it to this day. There's positive energy and there's also energy that perhaps came from trauma or comes from trauma. Things like slavery, the Holocaust, things like poverty and world wars. People have suffered uh, through many tragedies and through much trauma. And we all have, are a part of something. We're all a part of that. And Bernadette talks about her roots and what she learned through that trauma uh, as well. I hope you all enjoy the interview. And let's welcome Bernadette to the show. <laughs> Bernadette, welcome. It's so lovely to see you. Thank you so much for doing this today. Oh, Sha, I'm so happy to be here. Now, you are interested in a topic that many people find fascinating. Here in the UK, there are several shows about genealogy, but also about people who've lost some of their family. Um, maybe they were adopted and didn't have a connection and all of that. But I suppose the spiritual aspect still stays. So this is one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on the show is to get your view. So can you tell us what made you interested in genealogy on this level? Well, genealogy started for me. I've been doing it for over 15 years. Uh, and, but it was, as you said, the spiritual connection started to come in because I understood as I was researching and finding the incredible stories, truly a spiritual, you know, our ancestors are around us. And, you know, they really came in right away. But I will say that the greatest leap that I made was my husband passed away six years ago. Um, he unfortunately passed away from alcoholism. So it was a it was a difficult um, it was a difficult illness for him to have. And we had a deep spiritual connection. But it was as he was going through that. Uh, um, and I was still doing the ancestry and working with people, my ancestors came in to support me along this path. And that is where the, that is where the opening came. And it made me understand that the work I was doing with um, helping people build their family trees and discover those ancestral stories and the roots that they had, that I was taking them on um, an ancestral healing journey because our ancestors have 
have gone through many of the same things that we are going through. And we know now that science tells us that the experiences they had and the, um, the traumas that they went through have been passed down to us. So that is, is where the bigger opening came. Uh, but I also am trained in grief and trauma. So I have I worked in a, um, a middle school, a primary school with students who were on an alternative team who had experienced trauma. And I was um, somebody who worked with their behaviors, but as part of a mental health team. So I knew what trauma responses looked like and I knew what trauma, um, how it comes through our bodies and what it looked like and so those two kind of met up with my genealogy and it really was where I was able to start to understand um, the calling and the gift of what I was able to share with people so that's kind of where it all began or where it all kind of came together yes so that's interesting because I suppose it all does tie in the healing aspect of trauma and is bereavement to a trauma do you think yeah mm -hmm. it, when we uh, and it's one of the things that i've um, understood as i've helped people when we experience you know trauma can be uh, something, um, it can be war, it can be, uh, you know, slavery, it can be, you know, there's so many things in our past, historical past, it can be, um, you know, a natural disaster, uh, so many different things. But trauma is also something that it happens to us that we can't, um, our bodies are not able to uh, grasp the what is happening, what happens to us. And so it, um, so things that may not look like trauma to one person affect another another person very deeply and certainly the loss of a loved one or the other thing that I talk about is just a change in your life experience sometimes you know for some people it could be a divorce or it could be you know something great was to you know a loss of a job some something that caused uh, um, your life to change dramatically and all of that is is mixed up in this uh, um, in trauma and as i work with people people who are who are experiencing um, grief and they're experiencing trauma they are often drawn to opening up more to their spiritual side because it's at that point that we're saying i need some help you know i i need but it's also that um they are just um they're ready they're just ready to to learn more and understand more yeah so that's key isn't it that when we're ready um i suppose it's like everything when we're mm -hmm. ready uh, it's easier to get in there, get in. Right. So yeah. I wonder why, what are your thoughts about why we as human beings, we have this feeling, this need to be connected to the past, um, including our ancestors, and that runs deep. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we go to antique shops, we watch old mm -hmm. films, you know, we know that they're hugely popular. What is it about us and the past? Well, I think that, you know, there it is, um, there are many things that connect, that connect us to the past, but it's, it's spiritual energy, I think, is at the base of it, is the spiritual energy. But it is a way for us, especially if we um, have not had um, spiritual experience, the spiritual experiences that we've heard other people have. But if we if we begin to research and 
and to understand the stories of our ancestors. It gives us the, um, their family, and we feel that familial connection with them. And we look to them for, even though they are not here with us, that we can talk with them, they are with us, and, and they are supporting us um, as we go through the life that we are living. And interestingly, as I help people in their genealogy, there are usually certain ancestors that are calling to us, that are helping us make that connection. And those experiences are the ones that help us seek more and open up and open up more. I can I can share share um, a couple of experiences that I had when I was um, it was when David was so was so ill and and so sick and going through his um, his his illness. Um, I had a I, I was as I grew up Catholic, so I have this connection to Catholicism. And I happened to see a medium, and his name is John Edward, and he was, uh, you know, I saw him in a group setting, and he was talking about, as he got ready to, to talk to people and to read people, he would say the rosary before he would come on. And he did that because it was a way of meditation. It wasn't. And, and so I was thinking to myself as I was, as this trauma was building in me, as it was traumatic for not only, you know, my husband and myself, but our children, um, I thought, you know, I can do that. I can say, you know, the rosary. I didn't even have a rosary. I hadn't, you know, used a rosary for, you know, for years. I started doing it on my fingers actually until I and until I bought one. But so I started to, to say the rosary. And it was that way that I was, um, you know, just kind of a way of settling down. And I had what is called is a visitation. Now, a visitation is a dream, but it's a dream that is, uh, we think of it as a dream, but it truly is spirit that is connecting with us. And in this visitation, it was my great aunt, and her name was Sister Lou, and she was, um, and she was a nun, and she was wonderful. She was, just, you, you would have loved her. She just had a lot of spirit in her. And she came to me this one night, and I was, and it was in a difficult time, and she came in a dream, and we were both sitting across from each other, and I'm, she's holding my hands, and I'm trying not to look at her. I'm looking all around around. We're in this golden room and she grabs my hand, makes me look at her. And she says to me, we hear your prayers. And I knew, and then I woke up and I knew at that moment that my ancestors were with me and that they were understanding. And partly because as I was saying the rosary, I was imagining them sitting around a table with me saying the rosary with me. It was just, you know, I feel like spirit guided me to do that. But that was, you know, and I knew these ancestors. These were people whose lives I had researched. I knew their stories. So it was so comforting. And it is so transformational when I do that for others, help them know them personally. Um, but another experience which really um, solidified how close they are, it was also connected with the rosary. And if you, if you grew up Catholic, you understand that when you said the rosary, you were supposed to say it out loud. And it didn't have to be in a great loud voice, but a quiet voice. So I was doing that and I was saying it um, as I was, you know, I would say it before I, I would retire in the evening. And this one night I was saying it and all of a sudden I started to say it in an Irish brogue. And I realized that I had an Irish ancestor, an Irish grandmother that was coming in and saying it with me. And I couldn't do an Irish brogue for you today if I wanted to, but I'm, I am all Irish and my all Irish roots. 
And so then I, so it was an amazing experience and this continued. She continued to say the rosary with me every time I said it. And I looked back to discover who it was. And I was able to look and find because of a spiritual connection that I had, as I looked through my, my family tree, I realized that it was my great, great grandmother on my mother's side. And I knew that's, I knew that it was who, she, who it was. So as I help people in there going through their trees, I help them both in the, I want to say the nuts and bolts of finding, building that family tree and discovering those stories that we find in the records and in the, you know, the discoveries that we were able to make as a genealogist but also with an opening of a spiritual healing that can happen as we take the journey. Two enlightening stories there. And that power can be so strong, the power of the word. And I believe that's what the rosary, in my background, as we talked about before, is Catholicism as well. And that energy, with I, it might be the repetition, it's probably the ritual as well, it's very mm -hmm. powerful stuff, really. So yes. exciting. Why do you think that trauma, because it's all nice when a relative who you, you wouldn't have met your great, great uh, grandmother, no. had you? No, 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 no. So, so, you know, sometimes I have found in my work that it's those relatives who we never met who really do come forward to help us and champion us and, really mm -hmm. uh, support us i think it's because there's been there's nothing between you but love because yes a one-to-one -one connection on the earth plane never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now thank you for your support you make this podcast possible now back to the show but why is it or how is it trauma ancestral trauma affects us when our relatives went through it yes well it is as far the way that science talks about it is that as you experience trauma um you your body develops a trauma reaction to um so it can be anxiety it can be just difficulty communicating with others in the sense of you know, just being leery or work, you know, just a very cautious about how you present in the world and, and, and people you, um, you're just you, the fear, you know, that fear response is just stays with us. And I often help people understand it that, um, you know, we were given this fear response so that if we met a bear in the woods, we would understand that, you know, we needed to, to be aware and, and try and save ourselves. And so that response builds up in our body when we have experienced a trauma. So a trauma um, response is similar to if so, you know that that very strong fear response. And science is telling us that it changes the way our genes respond. And so that overexcited response to to something to a fear a fear reaction is passed down to us. And so when we are experiencing something that maybe shouldn't be evoking such a strong fear response, that's what's coming out of us because that trauma that our ancestors experienced was then translated into our genes and passed down to us. And they've actually discovered this through the, um, the first real um, groups that were studied were, were descendants of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And that's where there, there was a lot of studies done around that. And that's really what helped them understand that this is something that is genetically, that is passed down. But understanding, if we can understand the story and look back and see what our ancestor experienced, my families were famine families. And so scarcity and loss was a, was a great part of what they experienced. And I 
still feel that sense of scarcity of it. So, but I understand it. So now I'm able to not have that fear response that's quite as dramatic. Um, because I understand that is something that, you know, was passed down and you can see it. You, you see the patterns of behavior that were developed as a, as a response to the traumas. And those are also those patterns of behaviors in our family. We recognize too, as something that gets passed down. So all of this, as we're as we're going through our ancestry and learning about our our family, is really helpful for us. Absolutely. And how do we go about healing? Because that's what you offer. That's what you mm-hmm. help to do. How? What would that look like? How would you go about healing or helping to heal someone's ancestral past? The way we, so in, in, let me give you a, an example. I had somebody come to me and she was 75 years old. So she came to me and she wanted, she had this, this anxiety still related to the relationship that her father and her grandfather had with each other. Now, both of them had passed away by the time she was 75, and she was still feeling this anxiety. So I said to her, you know, sometimes we can look back and we see the patterns or we see what has um, happened in their lives that may have caused um, the relationship and why they were. So I set about to, you know, we we um, did her ancestry, did her ancestral tree. And I, I quickly found something that I felt may have caused the difficulty in their relationship. Now, she had told me she grew up in the Midwest. She was born, it was a Christian family. Her dad was an academic and he had gone to Harvard and you know, church going all. And she just felt like she grew up in just a normal um, family that just, um, and as we, as I look back several generations, I quickly realized and knew or discovered that um, her ancestral, her name, her family name had been changed and she was of Jewish ancestry. And this was something she had no idea that she had come and she was, she was amazed at that when she discovered this and overwhelmed the feeling that she had because she had always had an affinity for the Jewish people. And as we talked this through, we began to understand why this would have happened, what the trauma that was going on at the time for her, the generational, you know, the trauma that was happening for her, her um, ancestors that would have made them feel that changing the family name would give them a better chance and a safer way as they had, as, as they had come to live here in the United States. And so, you know, that's just a way of giving you an example of how you can actually have something in your past, a few, even just a few generations back that you can see that can help you. And when I, when it it just lifted her, she had such healing and understanding of not only, um, she doesn't know if her father actually knew and if that was why, but it still gave her a feeling of healing that there was this, this was sitting back there and it helped her to know. And that's just a small example um, because as we understand what when we look back and understand, even if it's just historically, if you aren't able to find a um, a very specific, you look back and see what was the what was happening to those to what your family, you know, where your families were living, and that helps us begin to put their story together. And that story, it's the storytelling that helps us understand and begin to heal um, just knowing that uh, there we don't have to we don't have to hold their trauma we can see it and we can learn from it but that's where the healing begins yes so 
I suppose it's the understanding, as you're saying, is the heal is the healing part. The knowing and the understanding helps us to heal, which is similar to what happens in therapy as well. Once right. you put a finger on it and you go, oh, that's so that's what it is. That's what's happening. That understanding can help. Um, but do would people have to do something else to help with the healing? In other words, yeah, would you recommend something else? Well, I think that what um, what happens, and it it's tied into this into the spiritual side. Um, understanding, I I think when we suffer um, a, a loss, you know, we're in grief and trauma. We often feel very alone, and it we um, it it is difficult. To, you know, we, you, I know from my own personal experience that it is very hard to move through the grief and and to um, begin to live, uh, you know, live a life again. Understanding now that your life has changed. Um, um, and so it is the reason why it is so powerful is when we learn that it starts to open us up to connecting with those who have passed and to staying in that spiritual connection. Uh, and the what I have experienced and what I've experienced with my clients is there are ways that they can learn to do this themselves to begin to understand their own personal, um, I have, you know, I do have, I don't call myself a medium, but I do have those types of experience when I'm working with clients and the ancestors come in and speak with me and let me know that we're on the right trail and this is the path that we should be looking at is mediumship. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, well, I guess I should say um, I, I'm not a, um, uh, a medium that gives you all the details, that kind of. Um, so, but, but I teach my clients that the healing also comes from understanding the, the spiritual person, the spiritual being that they are. And, and I think we open up to there is more than this. When we have that great loss, we suddenly realize we are connected to this other side. Um, I think I was in my middle 30s and I lost a dear friend who had passed away. She was a young woman and had, had gone to sleep and didn't wake up and must have had some type, but she was young, had a young family. And um, I was overwhelmed with the grief. And a couple of weeks later, I felt her spirit come to me. I was looking for pictures. I didn't know I had a picture of her. It popped up. And I knew that was a sign from her telling me that she was with me and she was okay and that I was going to be okay. And so that was when I first realized, okay, there is, we're connected and we have a connection with, and certainly when my husband passed away and the, and the connections I've had with him, you know, when, um, when our loved ones do pass, they're with us. And as our ancestors, you know, we've been talking about the ancestors, but our close ones, our close relatives that pass away, friends, they when they're on the other side, there, there are um, there are champions, as you the word I love that word. There are champions, and they're guiding us and, and trying to put the breadcrumbs um, in front of us to follow. And so that is what I encourage my clients to do to to help them along the healing path. So once they kind of understand what what that trauma is that they may be carrying. Um, I help them understand that there is a way to, um, I call it kind of, um, you know, raise the water, raise the boat kind of, you know, to bring your, begin to bring yourself up and, and know that um, the life that you're living that is, uh, is being guided and that there is, whatever difficulty that you've gone through, you're being um, guided to something greater and to open yourself up more to the other side and to the experiences um, is a way to foster that healing. 
And, you know, I, I think about it, I love the, the idea that, you know, looking linear wise, you know, looking to the past and bringing it to the future. I'm about to be a grandmother for the second time in a couple of weeks. And I think about this little granddaughter that is coming into the world. Um, but I also think of it as a circular that it is the, you know, the, the circle of life. And that although we think of it as looking back to the past, it, you know, it truly is, um, it, it is the circle of life. And that when, when we pass, I know I will be there for my descendants to guide them and, um, to say the Irish brogue with them, if I, you know, but to, to be there, you know, to, to, as a guide. When you were talking about um, alcoholism and, you know, addiction is such a cruel, cruel disease. And we see it, uh, we spot it, even when the person doesn't or is in denial because that's a part of their addiction and it's very difficult because it's traumatizing as we know to the person mm -hmm. who has the addiction but also to everyone around them everyone connected to them especially alcoholism mm -hmm. and so i wonder what we're meant to learn when our families have something like that disease with it. For some, it's it's other other things, you know, could be crime mm -hmm. for some that mm -hmm. can be generations down. Um, it could be many things, poverty. But what what do we learn in your experience working with people? And I'm sure in your work you've seen many different traumas that mm -hmm. people are meant to heal from. And do they talk ever about the lessons that perhaps their ancestors have learned or that they have learned from their traumas? You know, from, I can give you both from the personal journey, which I think is so, um, it, it definitely was um, after David's passing that this became more of a calling to me um, to bring this to other people. And what I would say going through the process um, of his, his journey is that what, what I learned um, was the understanding uh, this, I think the understanding that we're all on a very personal journey and that we, we, um, we can't control the journey of, of someone else. And the lessons that we may be learning are different from the lessons that they are learning. One of them, certainly for me, was that um, I wanted to, that idea that I could fix everything. And, and, you know, it's that we use a term often when people are talking about addiction of codependency, of, of helping, um, you know, thinking that we are helping when in fact we aren't helping. And I think that, that I, I began to learn a, a greater sense of self. And I actually had someone say to me, and it was a spiritual um it was some a spiritual guide who was here, not from not from across, but a spiritual guide who said to me that you, if you, uh, that I gave so much, and she said that I had to learn to receive, because if I didn't learn to receive, I was going to lose my gift of giving. And so I think my journey has been the learning to receive so that I can continue to give. And so when I try and guide people along, um, along the way about what is, what is it that they're, they're learning in this life and particularly with addiction, but I think we have that it's, there are a lot of givers out there that are the ones that are struggling um, because they've given to the point that there's nothing, that there's nothing left. And so I do think that that was part of my 
journey and the calling and continues to be that that um, my spiritual gift is to help people understand that and to to raise them so that they they know that it you know they they're the gifts in them are just as important as those that that they're trying to they're trying to give everything away instead of you know take it anything for themselves so i would say that and i often find that in clients um, many as i said earlier many of the clients that come to me come with some type of a um, a background whether it is having someone that has had addiction in their background, you know, a family member that has addiction or the loss of, you know, a loss of somebody and that suddenly being alone and, and not understanding how to move forward. So we work, I talk a lot about that, about what, what they are learning as they're going through this healing, that the healing is not, is not just to heal, but it is part of their, part of their growth. So it, you know, the healing comes through and I, I work with people, um, not just, I, I do the ancestral healing, but I also work pe with people in the mind, body and spirit connection of grieving and moving forward. Um, and I think that is, uh, they're, they're so related, but they can be so separate when we really delve into the grieving and the grief part of, um, our lives because there are so many times that we are grieving that we don't necessarily call it that we tend to think of grief as only the great loss of a loved one you know a spouse or a child or a parent so hi all thank you so much for watching i just wanted to say a large percentage of people who are watching right now are not subscribed so please, please, please click that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so when a new episode comes out, you'll get a notification, you won't miss it. Also click that like button, it really does make a difference. And finally, on all podcast platforms, leave us a five-star review. It really does help us to keep going. And if there are any topics you'd like me to discuss, do let me know. Yes. Talk to us, if you can, Bernadette, about grief. Do, do we go through loss or do we, do we recover from loss? Is it something we go through or do we learn to live with that loss? I love the way that you put that. Um, do we learn to live with the, the loss, with the grief? I would put it in, again, the term uh, terms of growth. So we, um, we, when you have that great loss, uh, there's no, you can't change those circumstances. No matter how hard your heart wishes you could bring somebody back or that, you know, that something could be different that change you can't do that isn't going to happen so we we first learn the steps of first of all what does grief do to our bodies how we how the exhaustion comes in how the inability to put one foot in front of the other um mental confusion all of the, these things happen and they're quite shocking when you're when you're grieving and you don't really understand it you think you're sick you think there's something you know that but it's truly just processing this so that's kind of the first thing that i try and help people understand and grief changes as you go through it so it, it in those first few days whatever it is that shock goes through your body but then it it starts to change and you know as you said do you learn to live with it you learn to grow with it if you are I would say, especially if you're you're um, working with someone to help you understand and see the growth that you're making, and being able to look at the uh, the progress that uh, you are, the baby steps even about going, just moving forward and. 
I try and teach them it is, as I was saying, you know, raise the water, raise the boat, like to help them know that there is, um, there's so much, you that they're so loved. Love is something that we really uh, probably haven't talked enough about in, you know, today, but that they're so loved and that the love, you know, that they are, um, their purpose is to to move move through it, but not to hold on to it. It's to, it is a path to grow through, and uh, that the grief is will always be there. But like the my grief is now a gift to give. So it is, you know, the understanding, I I was given the gift of being able to understand, to be with people who um, I'm also trained as an end-of-life doula. And so being able to work with people and help them understand what that, what the crossing will, will look like to them and how they will um, be greeted and all of it. So that's my gift. And each of us has a gift. What you are doing is a gift. And I think that's probably the thing I try and help people understand and work through, grow through. So I like to say grow through the grief um, to bring them to uh, a place of healing, you know, healing even more and then expanding, like just, you know, as I feel that there's so much more um, for me to give and for me to live. Uh, so that's what I would say. I, I do love that grow through grief. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, a new way for people to think about it because we often mm -hmm. hear the phrase, I'm going through grief or right. I'm going through loss and the seven stages of grief. And I suppose that, you know, I believe there are some stages to it, but mm -hmm. I should say you grow through grief. And mm -hmm. you learn from from it as well. But I, yeah. you touched on something I was going to ask you about, the end-of-life doula. So a lot mm -hmm. of people won't know what that is, or maybe some people have never heard of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us about what that entails? Yes. Um, I have worked in elder care management as well. So I've worked with families, helping them understand um, the next steps for either their um, just, to, you know, where they're going to move to, what their life's going to, you know, what they're going to have in their directives for what they would like at the end of their life. And uh, University of Vermont, um, the, the College of Medicine was given a chair, a palliative care chair and so they chose to develop this program for a professional certification in end-of-life doula and it is a wonderful way now I had had a great understanding I had been with people when they were very close to to crossing over but it was a wonderful way to understand the whole um, what grief looks like what people go through in the different stages and how you know, the person who's getting ready to pass or in that stage where they're moving through from to the palliative care which means that you are um, not you're not in hospice care, but you are in a stage of saying I'm not going to do any extraordinary um, things, and helping people move through that process, and it's such a beautiful amazing process. You learn as an end of life doula how to help the family, how to help the person who is getting ready to cross. Um, in some places, they will even help you understand how to care for the person once they have crossed. If you are in a, um, if you are in a place where that is something the family would do is take care of the body, prepare. Um, but in my case, it is, we were working with um, greatly working with the families and work, working with legacies. What is the legacy they would love to leave? Um, and that is where also ancestry comes in, helping them leave, leave a legacy. So it is, uh, it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful experience. And there is so much, I wish that we would have these conversations about crossing and passing because um, it is a beautiful thing and it is not something to be feared. And when you put somebody at, at ease, 
in that understanding. It is such, um, you can see that the fear just leave them. And, and some of the amazing, I remember this one client, elder, elder care client, and she was very close to passing. And I was singing to her just to, you know, make her, you know, she was not awake. I don't know where she was in the stage, but she wasn't, she wasn't awake. And, um, but I kept telling her, her husband had passed away. And I said, Bob is coming for you. He's coming. He's going to come and he's going to, and every time I had said that, cause I was holding her hand, she'd squeeze my hand. And that was the only reaction, but it was so, she knew what I was telling her. She knew. And so I, you know, it's such a beautiful part of the um, thinking about our ancestors is, you know, we all, um, we all cross, we, everybody, it's something, you know, death is something that um, shouldn't be feared and is, uh, is, is as beautiful as this birth of this new baby that's coming to me in a couple of weeks. So Oh, that's helpful. Every time you mention your new grandchild on its way, there's just such a lovely energy with it. I can't help but smile. I um, yeah, it's wonderful. That's something I believe a lot of people don't know about. Um, I've mentioned it to people and they're like, what? There's, there's actually a person who can be there and help? Mm -hmm. So, and you've explained, because in the UK we have courses as well, that you took a course and because you do have to learn what to do, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's not about anything else, but the person and helping them to embrace mm -hmm. what's happening in, in their life. At this yes. Time. Yeah. It, it's beautiful. So it must be really enriching for you as mm -hmm. well to know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. It is. So how can we all learn to deepen our spiritual connection with our ancestors? I would say the best way to do that is one, to learn about them. And that's where the ancestry comes in um, and learning their stories. And then what I would say is that to allow yourself to be open, open to them, to talk with them, to tell them that you want to feel their presence and that you want their guidance and to, um, and know, and to, to know that they are there wanting to give that guidance and to give that, um, that, you know, let you feel their spirit. And there are ways to have conversations with them, just literally to say, you know, people talk about seeing signs. I see a cardinal or I see a butterfly. And those are wonderful signs. And, and for people to see about their, their um, loved ones who have passed. But there are ways you can ask your ancestors, like, let me, what would it feel like if you were with me? Can you, can you let me know what that would feel like? And I, you know, often it'll be what I would call a spirit chill. Like if you are, um, you, or your body feels very, you feel the energy in your body. So right now my body is very energized. I know that spirit is with me and has been with me since we started our conversation. So I, I teach people to get a little more in tune with their bodies and to know that um, being able to connect with their ancestors and being able to connect with their loved ones is something that we all can do um, when we just open ourselves up. And I often will tell them to um, allow things that, for example, I, an, another, this was an ancestor. Uh, I had a, a great, great grandfather that came to me. I woke up one, or I think it was in the middle of the night, maybe. And I had this Irish song playing through my head. I was like, where is this coming? It was out of the blue. Where is this coming from? 
And then I realized that I had the next day, I had a cousin who I had met through Ancestry. I'd never met her before. So we'd only, and we were having a phone conversation the next day. And we shared this great, great grandfather. And so as soon as I made that connection, I knew that's who it was. He was coming in acknowledging that he would be with us when we were, when we were going to be speaking. So th those are the things I want people to be open to, to, you know, if they have, sometimes spirit comes to us in a song. Sometimes we hear it on the radio or sometimes it comes through us and you'll hear it. It can come in the form of um, just seeing, see, you know, seeing something that reminds you of them. And I want people to understand that for those of you who don't necessarily feel like you're connected and you don't know how to connect, be open to the little things. And as you are open to it, um, we talk about numbers. Sometimes people will talk about seeing numbers, the numerology. And if you are just open to it, that maybe that is your ancestors, or maybe it is someone from the other side that is calling to you. Um, you start to, they will pick up on that and start to show it to you more often. And that helps you build your spiritual muscle so to speak. And that's kind of, it's one of the things I hope to do is help people who were, who like me, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I would have been said, Oh no, I'm, I'm not connected. And I, and, and would think that I always needed someone to be, uh, um, you know, connecting for me to realize that, um, you can begin to develop that yourself and that it, we are all, um, you know, the divine energy that surrounds us is, um, is always with us and we are all divine sparks. And so um, we are all the centers of uh, divine centers. And then I think if we allow that divine energy that we can, um, we will begin to communicate more. And, 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 you know, maybe a guide, maybe an ancestor, you know, there are angels and spiritual beings. So um, I, that's what I would say is just to allow themselves to be open. And yeah, I think that's probably the, the best way. So that's really good advice, because as you say, you don't have to be you don't always have to have a medium. You can learn to do it yourself. And that's probably the most empowering message. If you take anything else away today, there's so many good bits in there. But know, like what Bernadette's saying is, you can learn to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. That is so empowering. Um, and I wanted to know too, is Los Angeles for you? I, I've told you that I used to live there. Um, do you find it a spiritual energy, energetic place? I, I absolutely do. Um, I came from Vermont. I just moved out here recently. And I came for the babies. Um, so um, when I moved out here, there is something, I feel it's desert connected to. There is a, but there was a, there's a very strong spiritual connection out here. And I feel it. I was recently in Tucson, Arizona and felt it very much there. So also mountains will bring that when you are around mountains, that will also bring, I happen to um, have been gifted with a view of the mountains here. And so I, when I look to the mountain, I feel, I, I feel the spiritual energy. So yes, I do feel, and I think that's why there's a lot of spiritual people around here in Los Angeles. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why. Yes, because places have energy, don't they? And they do. <laughs> yes, and some cities will be very heightened, I find. For me, mm -hmm. I find the New York area very heightened, and so my energy depletes quickly, and I've got to get out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can stay there a couple of days and then I've got to go. Is there anything, because I know that you've got a course, you've got sessions going and you, you have very kindly offered 10% off 
um, to anybody who's going to be signing up. And I'll put all the links in the show notes for people. But can you tell us about that? How what a session might look like and what you'd be offering and how that works? Oh, sure. So I have two ways to work with me. You can, we can do it in smaller blocks, which in a 90 minute session. And, and sometimes that's a gateway for people. It gives them so that they can, we can know each other and we're able to, um, I can help them understand what it is. We'll look back maybe a little into their ancestry and, or a little into their grieving process, which either way. Um, but then I also offer a way of, um, we can discuss a bigger project. So if you're looking to do a full family tree and a legacy and understand the full range of your ancestors. And as we do that, it's interesting. They will guide us through the the um, the different lines and the lines that are more in I don't want to say more important but that are where the spirits are more connected with you where there's where the so you know often we'll do that is go through all and that is a that's a bigger project so that we would have a um, a conversation I have a um, a thirty minute free sh- session that I'm offering right now too so someone could come in and just have that conversation with me and. and and we could talk about what it would look like and what, um, but it is, um, as a trained genealogist, I'm able to help them truly find those stories. And, and uh, I've done a lot of work in um, England. I have my, I have ancestors that came from, from England. So they went from Ireland to England. So I have in Scotland, so I'm very connected that way. But, um, but also, you know, so I'm able to do that type of work. I can, I do the research to help them um, or I help them if they've already built a tree we can go through it so there's multiple ways to work with me and um, I would say that just connecting if they want to start with a you know a 90 minute session that's a great way to get a lot of information and some really good um, information specifically about themselves mm. so and you use uh, ancestry.com or you do you how do you I use Ancestry.com because it's a great platform to work on, but you can, I am um, able to use other platforms if somebody has, so I, I know how to, to use, I'm also, I know how to work with DNA, so people who have their, um, have done their DNA and want to understand more, families that have adoption in their family, I've worked with um, and helped them understand that process so i'm i'm have as far as my uh genealogical work that it's a, a very broad um genealogical side as well as the spiritual side so it really is um there's something for uh for everybody to get started and decide where they would want to go but I think what what um what helps me is help people connect to a family that they didn't know that they were connected to. And, and so I help them and that's helped helps them, you know, understand um, you know, who their true, what their true ancestral lineage is. And that's a beautiful thing too. Oh, it is. It is it is so fascinating. And some of those um, traumas, because with ancestry, you you will find too often mm-hmm. how people passed away, where they passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you find out a lot of information, and that can cause some right. trauma, perhaps. And mm-hmm. you can take the next step with them to help them mm-hmm. understand it, but also to begin to heal from it. Yeah. You know, the, the woman who came to me, the 70, my 75 year old friend, she was so grateful at how gently I was able to present that to her. Because the thing that happens is there are, um, there are things in our past that may, we may find unsettling and, and, um, and not know what to do with. But I, I certainly know how to help people understand that and how to work through those um, difficult uh, discoveries. 
because they're, they're it, all families have secrets and yes. yeah and which is so traumatizing to many people secrets the secrets the secrets oh my goodness thank you so much <laughs> i love this thank you for the work that you do um yeah everybody can't do it you know so and also mm -hmm. the end of life doula i mean special people who choose to do that work people yeah. fear death as we know um yeah, it's such, it, yeah and it's nothing to fear i mean it's so if that would be the only thing i could impart is that it's a beautiful experience and being surrounded by loved ones as you're going is also a wonderful way or people that understand um understanding yes but also people you may not be going through death but you might um be a death because somebody's dying right and people that have those questions you know i i can certainly help them understand and that's why i have the side where i work with the grieving side because it is uh people are able helping them understand for themselves and and for the person that is crossing well, thank you once again, and I hope you come back at some point. We've got loads of other questions, and um, mm -hmm. I invite all listeners to please leave comments. If you have any questions for Bernadette as well, leave them in the comments. I'm sure she'll answer them. Thank you for joining, and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Uh. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and share the video on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow on your favorite social media platform. See you soon.